look to your covenant, O Lord, and forget not the life of your poor ones forever. Arise, O God, and defend your cause, and forget not the cries of those who seek you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'd like to welcome all of you to our Mass here at Holy Cross. We extend a welcome to all those of, uh, outside the parish who may be joining us. We thank you for praying with us and asking God's favor and blessings upon all of us. As we come together to worship the Lord, to honor the Lord, and to receive his word and his Eucharist, we call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in hearing me witness, in bearing me witness, that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks to you, God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against them. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat, began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes I look at old pictures uh, in scrapbooks, looking at times past, and we sometimes call the time past the good old days. And we say, I wish we could go back to the good old days. Well, in reality, my brothers and sisters, those good old days are some happy memories, but in the good old days, there was also some bad times and difficult times. There's never a time in life in which there isn't some ups and downs. Um, so it's important for us to know that some days are great and some days may be difficult. Things can change overnight. We can see what's happened to our world in just a very short time. This, our world is turned upside down because of the uh, virus and the pandemic. What we see in today's gospel, the apostles last week were really on a high because Jesus was able to do something great. He was able to multiply loaves and fishes to, to give to many, many people. And they were really excited about that wonderful moment. But then just a few hours later, they're on a boat and they're caught in a storm and things are not looking so great. Things are looking pretty tough. Things are looking dangerous and their lives may be at stake. I think back in those days, uh, I think they weren't great um, seamen. Uh, they were afraid of the water back in those days. They were because water was a sign of chaos, and they didn't have any control over the water. And 
And so they were kind of scaredy cats in a sense when it came to storms and so forth. They had no power over them. So here they are caught in a storm. They're by themselves. Jesus is away from them. And they are really, in a sense, panicking as what's going to happen to them. And then all of a sudden they see a kind of a vision. They see something like a ghost walking on the water. And of course, they're afraid of ghosts back in those days, of evil spirits. But Jesus then assures them that it's he. He's come out to them. And as soon as he identifies himself, Peter speaks up. Uh, he always likes to speak up, St. Peter. And he says, well, if that's truly you, Jesus, let me come and walk on the water with you. And Jesus says, come. And St. Peter comes, uh, steps in the water, and he begins to walk towards Jesus. But then he gets distracted. He gets distracted by what's going on around him. And so his attention on Jesus is turned away towards what is going on around him. And because of that, he begins to sink and looking like he's going to drown. And so he yells, Lord, save me. And of course, Jesus grabs him by the hand and saves him and brings him back safely into the boat. It's interesting to me, what I'm going to give Peter some credit for, that when he began to sink, he didn't try to turn around and go back into the boat. He didn't try to go back to the people who were safe in a sense, that boat, and try to get back in, but he kept looking at Jesus in a sense for, the, for, for safety and being, uh, being rescued. He knew that somehow, some way, Jesus is the one that's going to rescue him not his, his, uh, his apostle friends in the boat. And I think that's important for us to understand because sometimes we do that. Sometimes we think that somebody else can save us. Somebody else can, can bring us peace. Somebody else can bring us the joy that we're really seeking for. And so it's important for us to understand that because we all do that. Sometimes we don't think Jesus can help us, so we turn to something else. But in reality, the gospel is teaching us Jesus is the ultimate who brings us salvation. You know, sometimes we get criticized in the Catholic Church. And I understand it sometimes, why we are criticized. Some people think that we are, we Catholics believe that we're saved by the Pope, or we're saved by the bishops, or we're saved by the priests, or we're saved by the saints. But in reality, my brothers and sisters, we're not saved by the Pope, the bishops, and so forth. We're saved by Jesus alone. Now, the Pope, the bishops, the priests, the saints, the sacraments are a means in which Jesus reaches out to us. But we always remember that Jesus is the source of our salvation. So we ask the Lord, as we live our lives, that we enjoy the good times with thanksgiving and gratitude. And when the difficult times come, that we try to keep concentrating on Jesus, who will keep us afloat, who will keep us through whatever difficulties we have to go through. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. In faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, let us now present our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, that we may recognize God's presence in both the extraordinary and ordinary events of our lives, so that we may cooperate with God more fully, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As a new school year is starting, we pray for all parents, students, and teachers that God will keep them safe 
and that they keep their eyes of faith focused on Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us may find quiet time this week to recognize the Lord's whispering voice in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to end the coronavirus, that God will give strength to all who are caring for sick and wisdom to those searching for a cure. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For freedom from fear, that as we may hear the voice of Christ calling us to not be afraid and learn to turn to God in every circumstance that is beyond our control, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions that we each bring here today, that God hear and grant them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the faith, especially Kathy Hayes and Irma Grant, and all members of our parish family, that they may enjoy the eternal joy and the peace of God's presence forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Mel Black and Betty and John Abood, Louis T. and Bernice Jeblowski, Esther Ike, Joseph Brennan, and Ronald Charter, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to look upon us and our needs and our troubles and our difficulties and grant what we ask for through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread that we offer you. Through the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mistress water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer you. Through the vine, work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Humble spirit, contrite heart, and accept by you, you know, our sacrifice in your sight this day, be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all the clergy, and your beloved sons and daughters. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Heavenly Father, in this Holy Communion that I've shared today in your body and blood of your Son, may the extension of this communion be to all those who are homebound, unable to go to Mass because of this pandemic. May they receive the graces, the blessings of this communion. May they feel in their heart your loving presence. Jerusalem, glorify the Lord, who gives you your fill of finest wheat. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the body and blood of Jesus surround you, protect you, and bring you where you have to go safely, and keep you there safely, and bring you home safely. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May all the peace, the power, and the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is now ended. Go in peace to love, to trust, and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>